Hey guys and gals, I'm Pal, and welcome back to Earthbound. Last time, Paulo was kidnapped at the hands... tentacles? Tentacles of the department store spook, and our search for her led us here, to the flip side version of Foreside, called Moonside, a kaleidoscopic area full of characters whose colors match. These characters are very colorful. Yes is no, and no is yes. It makes perfect sense in Moonside. And that's actually... That's actually genius right there, because reverse that. No is yes and yes is no. That's how no most people would say it. They would start with no, not yes. And that's that's just interesting because if you reverse it, it sounds it sounds like how people would normally say it. That's that's clever. That is a highly that is very clever. Okay, well, Moonside is full of strange enemies and stranger people, and I don't want to fight many of the enemies. Uh, this, this, what is it called? This abstract art is okay to fight, it doesn't really do much. Uh, but the, the fire, the fire sprite enemies, you don't want to fight. Just don't fight them. Um, they do a lot of damage and have special abilities that make it hard to deal with them. If you stay here too long, you'll end up frying your brain. Yes, you will. No, you will not. Yes, no, you will won't. Welcome to Moonside. Welcome to Moonside. Moon I don't know. Moonside unnerves me more than any other area in the game. Let's try to avoid this enemy. Because, I mean, you go to Threed and you see zombies. Sure, there are zombies and ghosts and zombie ghosts. That's mildly scary, but that's a trope that's been done and redone in video games so much so that... It doesn't really phase me. I mean, if if the zombies looked scary or did scary things, maybe, sure, I would be slightly frightened of them. But it, they're not really that frightening. And another place, Happy Happy Village, not that frightening. It's oddly, it's kind of morbidly, uh, it, makes, it makes me morbidly curious, to be honest. But this area, Moonside, unnerves me more than any other area in the game. To my that I can think of. It, it has been a while since I've played Earthbound, but I remember this area very clearly, and it did unnerve me a lot, because everyone almost seems possessed. You seem possessed, because everything that you know to be true is now false. You seem like the crazy one, when everyone else seems insane. It's... It's a twist on things, and I find it find it more unnerving than any any other thing that the game could have done. Um, the fact that everything that we've gone through is now reversed. There are enemies on the streets. Uh, Jeff Souls is now 32. That's also strange. Offense one up by two. Defense one up by two. Guts one up by two. Vitality one up by one. Oh baby! IQ one up by three. Luck one up by one. Maximum HP one up by nine. Okay. I believe you. It's it is just unnerving. Do you understand all this? Well, if I'm getting into the Moon City and swing, I'm going to say no. Or yes. Yes, because I don't understand. No, you don't? To tell you the truth, neither do I. Good. I'm glad you get it. It's strange, man. It's really strange. Especially with what some of the people here say. Like this guy. I, to, I'll tell you what I hate in this world. That's steak. The color, the smell, the taste, the texture. Hey you, you're drooling. I, it's just unnerving to me. It may not be unnerving to you, but it is highly unnerving to me. I don't get it, and it, it like kind of goes against what I what I would think would I don't know not scare me, but would, would set me on edge. Uh, the Mani Mani statue's up ahead, but I'm going to stop you right here. Don't even think about getting past me, because you aren't with a guy whose eyebrows are connected and who also has a gold tooth. Then there's the Mani Mani statue, an antagonist that has not said a word, but is one of my favorite characters in video games because it never says anything. Here's here's one of those lines that sounds like it's they're possessed or something. How about I sharpen you? I just love sharpening. You don't want me to sharpen? Say them un si di moon. Welk, welk, om, welk, om, om. I don't know. It... I hope I'm not just seeing this and... You guys are like, dude, this is actually a very cool area. I mean, it is cool. It looks awesome, but it's unsettling. Hey, parking meters, and you're walking around. Ha ha ha, that's so funny. Welcome, come to Moonside. 
I don't know. But silent antagonist, <laughs> silent antagonist, Moni Moni statue. This this isn't done too often in gaming, where there is an antagonist that doesn't say a word. Silent protagonists are widespread among video games, but a as for antagonists, the game designers usually like them to tell you why they're evil. You want to- they, they think that they have to hold your hand and say, okay, Ganondorf is evil because he's jealous of what the Hy Hylians have. But that doesn't really lead you to suspect anything. Ganondorf is just cut and, uh, cut and dry. He's white and black. You know why he does what he does. Bones are great. Do you like bones too? Sure. You like bones? Bone, bone, bone. And here's one of the most famous lines in, in Earthbound. Do you know whose bones are on display here? The answer is, your bones, my bones. Bones, bones. Bone, bone, bone. That's, that is arguably one of the most famous quotes from Earthbound, just because it's so strange. But, creepypastas like to do the whole silent antagonist thing a lot. Ben Drowned, he says a couple things. Also, this guy will warp you to the hospital, but it's right up the street, so don't bother. Ben Drowned does say a few things, but... All in all, oh, I can't get the present, or I can't get the butterfly. Oh wait, he flew into me, okay. He says a couple things, but all in all, he's fairly silent. He's just in the background, letting you assume whatever you want about him. And Ben Drown, in case you didn't know, is a, uh, it's a Zelda-based creepypasta, where someone modded Majora's Mask and played it out like uh, someone got a haunted copy of Majora's Mask by a character named Ben who drowned and that was his copy of the game and he ended up possessing it and it's it's very cool it's very spooky go watch it it's actually pretty it's it's pretty good uh, pretty well done creepypasta uh, what do you say hello and goodbye oh cool present uh, this is the one present you should get or anyone should get before they leave moonside because inside here is a night pendant this is a charm we have not seen a charm in a long time. As some perspective, the last charm we saw was the Great Charm, which we have. It raises our defense by one and speed by five. And the uh, the Night Pendant, which is also a cool name, I I can only picture it looks something like a, a purple moon or something. I don't know. It's I like to use that my imagination with these items. The Night Pendant raises defense by fifteen. Now I could. I should probably equip this to Jeff because of the defense bonus, but I'm equipping it to Ness because it grants an immunity to PSI flash attacks. And, I mean, if your healer is flashed, then sometimes that can be kind of annoying. Okay, uh, yeah, it raises it by 15, and immunity to flash attacks. So, now we can actually leave the area now that we have that, though I'd like to talk to some more people, because it's interesting. I spy with my little eye. Alakazam! I see a country in summer, and a big silver ball. You're burnt, but you're fine. That is what I see. You know, next time you do that, you should probably rhyme, because rhymes sound good. But, I guess I could give an example of a silent protagonist. Um, spoilers for Okami. Uh, mute the video until the spoiler tags are off the screen, in case you do not want to be spoiled for Okami. Before the soup gets cold, we must care for Mani Mani. Before the knife gets rusty, we must care for Mani Mani. And before we talk to that guy, let's get this present. It has secret herb, which is also a good item. Uh, let's let's work this around here. Uh, double burger, Ness. But spoiler tag now because I need to I need to talk about Okami. In Okami, the final boss is Yami, who is essentially the origin of all evil in Nippon. And he never says a word. You hear about him the entire game, but he never says one word at all. When you finally see him, he blasts, um, he blasts, uh, but, uh, Waka, and Waka explains his, or, uh, explains, uh, Yami's origins. But Yami never speaks, so it leads the it leads the gamer, the player, to assume whatever they want about him. His origins, whether or not he was one of the brush gods that was exiled by the other thir 13, or maybe he was a creation of the Moon Tribe, or the Celestials themselves that turned corrupt and destroyed them. Or maybe he was the guardian of the Ark of Yamato, and 
He decided to protect the Ark from anyone, not just enemies. You never know, but it's the freedom that you are given by him never speaking that allows you to assume whatever you want about him. Those theories may not be false, they may not be true, but the fact that they cannot be confirmed or denied leads the viewer to have a deeper experience. He gets invested in the game. Hello and goodbye. Shall I? Now, this is a really devious trap, because when he says hello and goodbye, you'll probably notice the present before, uh, right before you talk to him, since the present is above him. And he says hello and goodbye, and you're expecting him to warp you, so you're panicked. You should say, by all means, you should say no, you don't want to warp. But if you do that, remember, this is Moonside. Yes is no, no is yes. So you have to say yes to get him not to warp you. Really devious trap. I fell for this once, and it was stinky. Uh, no. Goodbye. Thanks, man. And this is where we need to be. B.A. Brad- sorry, Mr. T. I'm really busy doing nothing, so I don't have time to talk to you. If you need- if you do need something, talk to my partner. He's right over there. See? You mean you can't see him? We can't see him, but we also cannot see what's behind him, so... By association, we can see him. Also, what is that sprite? I'm looking really close to the screen right now. Can you walk, like, down? Walk down a little bit, because it looks like he has a ponytail. No, wait, no, whoa, 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 that's Ness. That's Ness's sprite. It is. You know why? Because when he moves, there's a cap that wiggles. That is a black version of Ness's sprite. Here, look, here's it from the side. Yeah, that is Ness's sprite. Oh, that's so cool. Can you see me? Sure. Ha, -ha you can't? You're definitely not from around here. Hehe, <laughs> get going now. Here's your hat. What's your hurry? Haha, -ha, you can, huh? Hehe, <laughs> you've become a real min moon city and haven't you? Interesting. What the? You're looking for some kind of door? Well, you're not going to find one, so get out of my face, loser. I have no patience when people interrupt me while I'm busy doing nothing. And that's how we progress. We have to talk to that guy who's in the black suit, and then we have to talk to Mr. T. Hee ha! It's me! You can see me, right? There's something there's something interesting about you, so I'm going to follow you. Don't worry though. Eh, eh. If you get into a fight, I'll stay out of it. How uh, considerate of you. <laughs> you can't see me, right? No, I can't. Hi, how are you doing? From the look of things, I would say not so good. Do you need anything? This is all the stuff he has. I don't want it, but you guys can get Dark Moon Hotel, that's a cool name. I uh, know I don't want to sleep, but I Wait, I said- Oh, I said yes! Oh, well, he fixed the broken pipe. Okay, it's not that bad. And we got to hear the unique startup morning. Good morn. Uh, not morning. Here in Moonside, it's always the middle of the night. Here's a headline from t tonight's Moonside Press. Moni Moni is always Moni Moni at Moni Moni with all Moni Moni Moni. Huh. Well, I'm going to save real quick before I continue to talk about stuff. There we go. Quick fix is done. Let's move on. Yuck, yuck. Hey, don't you wish you had a gold tooth like mine? Give me a smile. <laughs> Man, he reminds me of a character from a video game. Probably, well, it'd be... <laughs> very, a very few video games I don't want to talk about on the channel, but this is one that I wouldn't. But it reminds me of a character from GTA V. I've never played the game, but I know of it. And I'm not a fan. Well, I'm a fan of GTA Online, because that looks like a fun thing. But I'm not a fan of the game. It just kind of, ugh. A grin, grin. <laughs> Seems like character named Lester. Uh, <laughs> yo, don't you think my eyebrows rock? Check them out, they're connected and stuff. Ness's HP drops to zero. Jeff's HP drops to zero. Wait, did it really? No, it didn't. You troll. Man, this... This area is full of pranksters, no! But I guess finally to wrap up my little talk on, um, Moni Moni. I, I just want to bring one more game series that, uh, that has silent antagonists that you guys would probably know, and this is the reason why that series is popular. You want to hear it? Five Nights at Freddy's! The reason why- this is the exact reason why that series is so popular. It's because the viewer can assume anything they want about the game. Anything. They can assume that the the five animatronics are actually the dead 
possessed uh, children. They can assume that, I don't know, Fox or Freddy is Smooth McGroove. They can assume anything. And it's not necessarily wrong because the game never confirms or denies it. That is the reason why Five Nights at Freddy's is as popular as it is. There you go. I figured it out for you. Also, is it this guy who warps us to uh, the place? I think it is. Yeah, I believe it is. It is! Memory serves. And I didn't really talk about what uh, what first-time visitors to uh, Moonside should do. My best advice, like, I did not use a guide for this, for this episode. I didn't. Because if you remember who you talk to, you'll be golden. Like, you will. Because if you remember who you talk to, then you remember who warps you where, and you just talk to new people, and you're going to end up going where you want to be. Or you could just follow me step by step. The Monty Monty statue's up ahead, but I'm going to stop you right here. Huzzah! You really surprised me. You're the man whose eyebrows are connected and who has a gold tooth. How about we dump these kids and go get something to drink? Just like that, he's gone. I want that enemy to despawn. It did not, but I should be able to get this far. Yes! Don't do anything to me. I am... I am not Monotoli. Okay, now when when he leaves, I want to immediately run up to the Monty Monty statue to try and avoid this, this battle. Ready, set, go! Yeah, I d wait, did I? Did I approach it? I might have glitched the game, actually. Dolly's Clock, not a difficult enemy, it'll just bash it like the melted wax he is. Wow, Ness, thank you. Ness reads minds, I, I promise, somehow he can read minds. Okay, did we glitch it? No. We didn't glitch it. Well, that's fine. It is a golden statue that is that you have seen before. So, before, whenever we saw Monty Monty, he was always behind the scenes pulling the strings. We saw him behind Carpenter, giving Carpenter the strength of thunder and lightning, which we, re we repelled with the Franklin Badge. But, the Monty Monty statue didn't reveal itself. It bided its time so that it could live another day. It was defenseless, and now, its defenses are lowered. We are approaching it in its own world. This is the world of Mani Mani. We have infiltrated it, and we are now about to kill him. Finally, he's no longer protected by anyone. He's no longer veiled as being, um, being... What's the word I'm thinking of? Not inadequate. Um, not threatening, I guess. We finally know what he is, and we know that we should put a stop to him before... He flees again and reappears somewhere else to cause trouble. And by using our most powerful attacks, we should be able to take him out in a jiffy. Attacking, does 69 damage to Ness, Big Bottle Rocket comes out and does 560 damage and destroys him. At long last, the Mani Mani statue is no more. 14,000 experience each. Ness's level is now 37, IQ went up by 1, HP went up by 1, PP went up by 3. Jet's level is now 33, maximum HP went up by 1. The Mani Mani statue was actually a device that created illusions. The illusion device was destroyed. Now, here's my rub with this. Sure, it's destroyed. But, like I said, the Mani Mani statue is a silent antagonist. I personally do not believe it's destroyed. Why? I mean, this is a this is a long shot. Maybe I'm stretching a little bit too far. But look at the base. Look at the base of the statue. Okay? It is not touching the body, and yet it is standing upright. How? How is it doing that? I know I'm stretching it really far, but I, it is my belief that if there was an illusion device, it could definitely and very easily create the illusion of it being destroyed, and it could still be whole. I do not believe that the Mani Mani statue is destroyed, but maybe that's just because I want it to live on. That's the point of it being a silent antagonist. You want, you kind of start cheering for the, the enemy, because you want to keep seeing it. You want to see more, so you can figure out eventually what drives it. And as for me, I still think that the Mani Mani statue is alive. You were wandering around the warehouse with a vacant, faraway look in your eyes. Were you daydreaming? And also, this way, if we never, if Ness never sees the Mani Mani statue again, the prophecy that Buzz Buzz foretold at, in the first episode of us shattering the Nightmare Rock, it's, it's still true. We shattered him, technically. He will never bug us again. But 
if he survives, if the Mani Mani statue survives, who's to say that the prophecy wasn't actually true? Can you move away, mouse? Mouse. 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 Thank you. Hello, this is Apple Kid. I've come up with another wacky invention that I think has real potential. Maybe you won't, but anyway. It's called the Gourmet Yogurt Machine. It makes many different flavors of yogurt. The only problem is, right now, it can only make trout-flavored yogurt. So I'm having the machine delivered to you via Escargot Express. It's coming neglected class. Hopefully you'll get it soon. Yeah, everything is... Kaboom! Uh, I got some problems good here, gotta go, bye! That's the end of Moonside. It was all an illusion created by the Mo the Mani Mani statue. <laughs> what? Why did you just run into a wall? I'm not a delivery man. I can't remember if we met. Talarama just finished fasting, and now he wants to meet you at the west end of Dusty Dunes Desert in a cave with lots of monkeys. I'll use my teleportation to... Bye. <laughs> I don't think he's he's very good at that yet. Crash. Oops. Crunch. Oops. Uh, greetings. It's Escargot Express's neglected class. Phew. I just got here from Dusty Dunes Desert. Uh, or Dusty Dune Desert. There was a sunbathing guy, and he told me about a cave with lots of monkeys. Or was it orangutans? Anyway, he said, uh, well, I forgot. Yep, I forgot. Actually, I forgot the stuff that I was supposed to deliver, too. I think it was some weird machine to make trout-flavored yogurt. Uh, yeah, I forgot, I forgot it at the desert. I'm not going back that way, so don't ask me to get the package. I mean, it's your package, right? So you go get it. Go on, get out of here. Maybe that thing I forgot is important to you. So, uh, have a good time in the desert! Hello? I heard you- I heard you talking about trout-flavored yogurt. I'm a maid who serves Mr. Monotoli, and I'm looking for trout-flavored yogurt to give to our special guest. If you know anything about it, please tell me. I've been searching and searching. Wow, that was fast. We got a new objective. Look for the trout yogurt machine. And we'll be going over to the Dusty Dune de Desert this episode, because we have a little bit of time left in the episode. And while that happens, let me talk about last episode, because I have rants to do. And I like it when I'm talking about something and not just talking about the game. Last episode, you guys seemed to like the, uh, the whole intro. If you didn't watch last episode, go watch it. Definitely. Like, 100%. Go watch that episode. It was good. It was really good. Uh, yeah, I'll go to the thing. But you guys talked about how I did the cool intro with the reference to the, th the game. Once again, go back and watch it if you don't know what I'm talking about. But I only saw one comment, and it was by someone I told specifically about it, uh, about the, the things that are hidden throughout that episode. Go back and watch it, because I guarantee you that when you go to the area where uh, the department store goes dark, you will notice some, some cr pretty creepy things. Look closely, turn up the brightness of the video, and watch closely. Trust me, it'll be worth it. I hid a bunch of stuff all over that episode, so go go watch it again, because I only saw one comment, and it was by Dave. And Dave, I talked to, like, on the phone about it or something. This bus continues on Tucson. Do you want to get off here? Uh, n yes! I almost said no. I almost said no because I'm still speaking Moon City in. Okay. Let's get off and uh, go into the drugstore. Because before we go to that cave, the monkey caves, we need two specific items. We need the skip sandwich, uh, which, Ness, go ahead and take that, and then we need a picnic lunch. Trust me, these are mandatory to progress through the game. And then I would like to sell some stuff. Let's see, what could we sell? I want the magic, uh, I want the secret herb, I like the skips of, da, 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 da. Um, oh wait, we have the great charm, I can sell that. $200, okay. Uh, yes, you can sell some other stuff. Does Jeff have anything? Yeah, he has the protein drink and the, the, uh, the handbag strap. I can sell those, why not? The handbag strap, by the way, uh, is a one-time use item. I believe it solidifies the enemy. So that's... Actually, no, it's par it par uh, paralyzes the enemy. That's right. So let's sell that. Wait, did we seriously ha sell that handbag strap for that much money? Wow, okay. Wait. Oh, did I sell a big bottle rocket? 
or what did I sell? Did I? Okay, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> I am confused. I, did I sell something? I think I sold a big bottle rocket. I wasn't paying attention. Well, ho oh, um, at least I didn't sell anything important like the magic truffle. I really hope I didn't sell that. I would literally restart the episode if I thought that I sold that, and I didn't, thank goodness. Okay, let's go ahead and move that to the top of my inventory because I love that item! Man, that's such a cool thing! I love it! It's awesome! Okay, well let's go over to the monkey caves and then I can end this episode off proper. It's been nice doing shorter episodes because I went back and looked at Okami and I was surprised because I was doing 40 minute episodes and when I recorded them, they didn't feel like 40 minute episodes, so I'm glad that I'm keeping things shorter. Ooh, 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 you, you, you. Oh boy. Skelpion. Oh boy. Oh no. Ah, uh, Skelpion. Okay, please don't hurt me, Skelpion. Stung, got poisoned. Oh my goodness. Skelpion. <sighs> Skelpion. Skelpion. Wait, what? What's that? I don't know that item. Well, that's interesting. Uh, Vial of Serum. Well, first, let's 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 heal myself up. Healing beta on myself. Okay. What is a Vial of Serum, please? Tell me what that is. Help. Vial of Serum. This is the best thing to take when you get poisoned. Oh, so it cures poison. I did not know about that item. Interesting. Okay. Give to myself. So, the monkey caves are right here. Very, uh, very locali locally located. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Welcome. Our paradise exists beneath that hole. Talarama is great and kind. And he knows everything Talarama does. He made us the underground rooms. Okay, just, just as a reality check, you do know that, like, holes in sand like this don't work, right? Because sand does not work that way. I can only imagine that because this is earthbound, nothing makes sense, this cave is held together by the monkey spit. That makes a lot of sense, I'm not fighting that mushroom. I can move on, not fighting that mushroom either. So the monkey caves are kind of strange, they're not like any other area we face thus far, although I, you could really say that about any area in earthbound. Every area is different, like, that's one of the, the beauties of this game. But. This area is a dungeon, but it's not your typical dungeon. You don't fight enemies, though there are a couple. You exchange items. These monkeys each want a specific item. This one wants a picnic lunch, which is why we picked it up. And this one wants a skip sandwich. It's interesting. And next episode, we're going to be giving these the items to these monkeys, trying to go through the best route possible to get everything we want, while simultaneously not taking a long time. Thank you so much for watching. Next time, we're going to be doing that. And if you like this episode, then comment. If you didn't like this episode, then comment and tell me how I could make the next episode so that you would like it. I release new episodes of Earthbound Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time for another Pal Plays Earthbound. It's a good game full of great antagonists, colorful characters, and a lot of variety. See you guys then!